DeepSeek just dropped a new AI model that's causing a serious stir, and it's not hard to see why. It's powerful enough to rival top Western models, yet efficient enough to run on a high-end Mac Studio, all while being completely open source under the MIT license. With China doubling down on AI advancements and global tensions rising, this release is making waves far beyond the tech world. One reason the AI world is freaking out about DeepSeek V30324 is that the model is now released under the MIT license, which is super permissive. Before, DeepSeek had used a custom open source license that placed more restrictions on how developers could use or modify its stuff. Now, with that MIT license, practically anybody can take DeepSeek V30324, fiddle with it, embed it in commercial products, or adapt it however they want. This kind of open approach is a big moment for China's AI sector, because it makes it so much easier for small teams and new startups to jump on board and work with something cutting edge right away. People are also really excited about the efficiency and performance improvements. One major highlight is that the new V3 can generate text at a faster rate than older models. Some folks on social media pointed out that it hits around 20 tokens per second on a high-end Mac Studio, though they did have to apply a 4-bit quantization trick to get there. 4-bit quantization, in case you're not familiar, is a process that slightly lowers the precision of the model's internal calculations to make it run faster and use less memory. It can mean a bit of a drop in output quality, but for many applications, it's a worthy trade-off. It's especially interesting that they ran it on a Mac Studio, which isn't typically the hardware you see when you talk about frontier large language models. This particular setup did have a hefty $9,499 price tag, but it's still remarkable that you don't need a full-blown data center or monster GPU cluster to see decent speeds. B30324 also has this approach where it doesn't activate all of its parameters every time it answers a question. Specifically, we're talking about a total capacity of 671 billion parameters, but only about 37 billion of them get used per prompt. It's often referred to as a mixture of experts strategy, although DeepSeek sometimes phrases it in its own special terms. Mixture of experts means you don't keep everything dense all the time. Instead, you break a model into smaller specialized networks, then only call up the parts you really need for a specific problem. It's less resource intensive than trying to have a single giant model handle everything, and that's partly how DeepSeek is able to keep inference costs down. If we look back for a moment, the original DeepSeek V3 was released in December. Their engineers spent about 2.8 million graphics card hours training it on a 14.8 trillion token dataset, which is massive, but still smaller in cost than what people expected for something that size. They also included knowledge from their more advanced reasoning model, DeepSeek R1, by feeding V3 a bunch of sample prompts that R1 had already solved. R1 launched in January and quickly put DeepSeek on the map because it performed extremely well at advanced reasoning tasks, math problems, and code generation. V30324 isn't specifically optimized for reasoning in quite the same way R1 is, but it's still pretty good at logic, coding, and general problem solving. Some informal code generation tests show that it hits around 60% on Python and Bash tasks which is definitely an improvement over previous versions, though it still trails behind R1 or Quinn32B, another top tier reasoning model. As AI models like DeepSeek keep advancing, staying on top of these changes is more important than ever. With AI transforming the economy and reshaping how we work, knowing how to use these tools isn't just helpful, it's essential. Mastering these skills makes you more valuable and gives you a serious edge, which is why I strongly recommend OutSkill's two-day AI mastermind. It's the world's first AI-focused education platform backed by top artificial intelligence investors and founders. This weekend, they're running a 16-hour live training from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. on both Saturday and Sunday. Normally priced at $895, it's free for my audience. In this program, you'll gain in-depth knowledge on a wide range of topics, including over 20 powerful artificial intelligence tools, prompt engineering for better results, data analysis without coding, using AI and Excel in creating pro-level presentations, building tools without writing code, 
creating stunning images and videos with AI, developing AI agents, automating tasks to save time and boost productivity. More than 1 million people from 40 countries have joined this training, and it's perfect for anyone from tech professionals to business owners and freelancers. Slots are filling up fast, so click the link in the description to book your spot. Don't forget to join their WhatsApp groups for updates, and there's an intro call this Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure you don't miss it. All right, now back to DeepSeek. Another cool thing about V30324 is that it expanded context length from something like 4K tokens all the way up to 128K tokens. The method DeepSeek claims to have used is something it calls YARN, yet another recurrent network. That might sound a bit quirky, but basically it's a method for dealing with extended context windows. If we look at certain benchmarks, there's a mention of the Eiders polyglot test, where DeepSeek A1203.4 clocked in at around 55%, placing it right behind Sonnet 3.7, among non-reasoning centric models. That's pretty good considering the competition out there. And people do note that DeepSeek v 30324 style is a bit more formal than older versions. So if you got used to that more relaxed human-like tone from the original V3, you might find the new version somewhat more intellectual or structured. Some folks appreciate that for professional or academic uses, while others prefer a more casual vibe for chatbot interactions. Either way, it's definitely an impressive leap in terms of raw power. All this is set against a bigger backdrop. The Chinese government is apparently telling its top AI experts and entrepreneurs to avoid traveling to the US, citing security concerns. They're worried these people could be detained or pressured to reveal details about China's AI progress, especially given how quickly DeepSeek success has boosted China's reputation in the AI race. We've heard that DeepSeek founder Liang Wenfeng chose not to attend some AI summit in Paris a while back, and there are rumors of other Chinese AI leaders canceling or postponing US trips. This is all reminiscent of the earlier incident with a Huawei executive, and it shows how global competition in AI is spilling over into real-world politics and travel restrictions. Meanwhile, the surge of confidence from DeepSeek's breakthroughs has apparently sparked a revival in China's memory and storage industries. People are feeling excited about investing in infrastructure for AI. It's fueling a wave of changes at other Chinese AI startups too. Take 01.ai, for example. It's a company founded by the well-known venture capitalist and former head of Google China, Kai Fu Li. That company used to do its own pre-training of large models, but the cost kept going up, and they decided that it might be more effective to pivot and focus on selling customized AI solutions that actually build on top of DeepSeek's models. Another name is Baichuan, which has now decided to concentrate on healthcare after briefly trying consumer chatbots and finance. Then there's Zipu, which used to be considered a major LLM contender in China, but it's struggling with big losses and is pushing for an IPO to keep itself afloat. And of course, we have Moonshot, which rolled out a popular chatbot called Kimi, but it's been struggling with outages, so it's now pouring money into training bigger models. All these moves underscore how DeepSeek's success with R1 and now V30324 has made the competition scramble to rethink what they're doing. Part of what's interesting is that DeepSeek says it would rather focus on research than sell business applications directly. That choice leaves plenty of room for other companies like 01.ai or big players like Baidu to act as go-betweens, offering businesses solutions based on DeepSeek's model. That might be a good strategy because the Chinese market for enterprise AI solutions is notoriously competitive and you need big sales teams and lots of local government relationships to succeed. DeepSeek is trying to remain a pure R&D powerhouse. But DeepSeek's influence isn't limited to the commercial space. We're hearing that the Chinese military is also experimenting with the model in some of its hospitals to help with diagnostic suggestions. The People's Liberation Army is apparently using DeepSeek for non-combat tasks as a kind of test before pushing it into more sensitive missions like controlling drones or analyzing satellite images. It makes sense that the PLA wants to see how robust the model is in more benign settings because AI in the military can get really complicated. DeepSeek's open source nature makes it appealing, since the data and computations can be stored on local servers for security reasons. All of this is intertwined with the US tech 
export controls on advanced chips. People wondered whether China's AI would stall without access to cutting-edge GPUs, but DeepSeek says it used NVIDIA's H800 chips, which are somewhat restricted but still powerful enough, to train V30324. They claim the entire training process cost them less than $6 million, which is super low compared to the usual training bill for a frontier AI model of this scale. That figure has sparked some debate about whether the US restrictions on hardware are actually slowing China down as intended. Some in Silicon Valley are worried that Chinese companies, with their mixture of experts approach, might be finding ways to accomplish world-class results without needing the absolute top-tier HPC clusters or the highest-end graphics cards. It's causing quite a few heads to turn, especially since some US tech firms are said to have lost around a trillion dollars in market value amid concerns that Chinese AI could surpass them. Even Donald Trump made a remark about DeepSeek, calling it a wake-up call for American tech. In the meantime, local governments in China are really embracing DeepSeek's tech. We see mention of municipalities like Chongqing wanting to go all in on AI+, basically rolling out AI-driven solutions for city management. Beijing and Shenzhen are setting up funds to support big AI and robotics projects. The stance from the top leadership is that AI is a key strategic sector and DeepSeek's success is being used to prove that Chinese talent and resources can match or exceed the West. It's a dramatic shift from just a couple of years ago when many believed China was playing catch-up in AI research. Now, with each new model release, DeepSeek is giving Western counterparts like OpenAI, Anthropic, or Google a run for their money and definitely shaking up expectations on both sides of the Pacific. So that's the picture as it stands. DeepSeek V30324 is the single upgraded release that's capturing headlines. Not two different V3 updates. The new model is more efficient, it can handle a ton of context, and it's trained on that massive data set while using some clever mixture of experts approach to keep hardware requirements down. Chinese AI startups are racing to stay relevant in a market that suddenly seems dominated by deep seek. Local governments are jumping in to transform public services, and even the Chinese military is dipping a toe in the water with non-combat deployments. Add in the friction with the US over chip export controls and concerns about detaining AI experts, and you have one of the most dramatic stories unfolding in the world of tech right now. I hope this gave you a solid overview of what's going on with DeepSeek's new V30324 model. I really think we're only at the start of a massive shift, and it'll be fascinating to see how this plays out in the coming months. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next update.